Good morning, everybody. It's Monday morning. I'm back from my camping weekend, which was eventful, to say the least. Uh, so we had a terrible, terrible, terrible weather on Friday here. And uh, that was the first day, supposedly, of my camping trip. Um, and uh, cut long story short, I managed to kill my car two miles away from my destination, the youth hostel, uh, trying to wade through a little bit of flood water. Uh, everyone else got through, but my Volvo is like really low slung and I went through behind a van and uh, kind of got backwash off the van, went into the air intake, went into the cylinders, <laughs> car's dead. It's a shame because I absolutely love that car. And then, you know, I've had loads and loads of beer and then decided to play some 10 minute, bl uh, 10, 10 minute rapid games. So my uh, rapid rating has dropped like a stone from 1600 to 1478. So that is what we are going to do. That's what we're going to carry on with. I'm going to scrap the not a speed run. And, uh, and we're just going to play some serious chess, I think is the, is the idea. So bear with. So objective number one, road to 1500. Get back to 1500 and we'll see what we what we get. Okay, so supper jump at 1449 from Deutschland. And we are going, oh, we've got Karakant. Okay, so obviously it's the von Hennig Gambit. There we go, with bishop c4. And the normal moves are these. Either way, I'll play pawn to f3. Sorry if you can hear the uh, tumble dry going off in the background. So yeah, crazy, crazy time. So I've, today I've got to sort out, I've got to empty my car, I've got to arrange for it to be scrapped. Thankfully the RAC man towed me all the way back, 17 miles on a rigid bar. Um, yeah, you need, need a new motor, mate. Gonna need a new motor. So F3 and pre-move the night recapture. And then we're hoping for the bishop to come out to g4, in which case the best move is bishop takes f7. We're playing a rapid game, not blitz bullets, so I'm not going to go for oh no, my queen. And I do get uh, an unhealthy advantage by playing some of these gambits. But, uh, you know, it's a level playing field, same for everybody. I get suckered by the odd gambit myself from time to time. So I've had a lot of crap as well this weekend. So we, we, I think we got through like 50 cans of beer. Yeah, so it was me, my mate Nick, and our two teenage sons, aged 16 and 17. Um, so yeah, we got through quite, quite a few beers. And we ate quite a lot of crap. So... Uh, including the biggest burger I've ever seen. The Mamtor burger. We all had it. <sighs> okay, what are you doing there, supper jump? Normally people don't really think twice before pinning the knight. But he realizes he's, he's facing a gambit. He is behind in development. So white is in compensation. White, the yeah, black has an extra pawn. Okay, which is technically, well, one of these, isn't it, really? Ooh, quietness, quietness. Okay, I think castles is a sensible move here. Developing the bishop. I mean, bishop g5 will almost certainly just prompt bishop b7. So I think we, we could castle. Another thing we could think about is long castles as a, as a strategy. So maybe like even bishop here. The knight defends that pawn. It's only attacked once by the queen. Bishop here or bishop here. I think he's he's probably going short. And also this move has kind of blocked in the light square bishop a little bit. So it's not made life very fun for that bishop. I'm going to play this just in case of that pin. Um, then maybe queen e2, long castles. Get my rook on d1 behind this pawn. Yeah, the pawn is, you know, walking straight straight to the hot gates, but maybe that isn't my pawn break. I like the idea that I've got 
open F file. But I mean, having said that, short castles just puts my rook straight onto this semi-open file. So there's an argument for that as well. So I've dropped 150 points for you guys. And we just carry on our our run from here. It's it's fine to it's fine to lose Elo, you know? It, it happens. But you have slides. Okay. So Bishop here. See, it doesn't feel like it's the optimal place for that bishop to belong. If I was to castle here though, you know, that knight is defended, because there's always ideas of, of an exchange sacrifice. I do have potential outpost et for my knight, but I, I'm thinking now this and then castling one side. Is that where my queen wants to be? I mean, my queen could come to c1, maybe. Something's telling me that short castles is, is the more correct approach. But I've, I've, I'm in the mood for a pawn storm, so I'm playing queen e2. That's attacked only by the queen, so we're okay now. I've got this. There's, I mean, this is also like a standoff, right? I'm also preventing the C and E pawns from, from moving forwards. Especially if I've got a rook on there. Could have some plans there. And then, you know, it's Harry and Gary are just going to give up their lives for the cause. And we're going to try and smash in the gates. One, two, three, four, and the queen. Right, black has one, two. So we're going to need a new motor. Yeah, my my poor Volvo. Right, we are castling. Yeah, three hundred pounds. That's less than four hundred dollars I paid for that car. I've had it two years, and at time of death. 270,000 miles on the clock. Absolutely loved that car. Loved it. And I killed it. In a moment of madness. Trying to get through what I thought, oh, I'll have two miles from the thing. What can possibly go wrong? We well, could kill your car, dude. 50 years old. You live and learn. Isn't this what we always say? Is this bishop in the right place? His bishop's there, right? Doing a job defending this knight. It wasn't about to come out and do this pin. As, as usual, it will come down to tactics and blunders and crap like that. So I hope you're, you guys are doing better. So after I do this, I'm going to crack that, crack on with uh, my book writing stuff. Need to get, need to get paid in the next few weeks, or else it's on the streets for us. Fortunately, my, my wife's working quite hard at the minute as well, and doing well at her work, so... She teaches barbecuing and butchery and stuff like that. In a very world-renowned cookery school. So she's a star. Okay, opponents taking quite a think. Okay, we have a weak pawn created here. Is it really going to find it hard to make progress up the board? Now, I've got two options. This one maintains the bishop in line with the king, but there is a lot of traffic in the way. This option is the more flexible. A third option is to trade a minor piece for the two pawns. But you have to make a strong argument for that, because then I would be down essentially a full piece. Because um, I'm a pawn behind already. And I don't know if I can justify that. Is this bishop bad enough to trade it for two pawns? I don't think so. I think this bishop should have a future, so I'm going to stick it on d3. Bishops can look kind of poor here, but they are, you know, they're controlling squares. Mm. 
not necessarily all the most critical squares on the board, but squares nonetheless. There's a lot more than that, fellow. Okay. Knight BD7. Right, now, this, this feels like 10 moves, right? Yes, he's castled. He's got three minor pieces developed. And this bishop is one unhappy bishop. Now, I'm kind of drawn to putting my bishop here, actually. Because, see, this bad pawn now then can't move forwards because it would hang the rook, right? It would pin the pawn. If knight takes, knight takes. Again, looking quite good. Or do we just improve? Maybe it's time to push pawns. Does this rook want to make stay on the d-file or does it want to come over and join the attack? dg1. I've got an over the board game tonight as well, by the way. It's wood seats d, I think. I think we've played them twice. I lost one against the Franco-Sicilian, which I'm not going to fall for again. And then uh, my last one was against the girl. Um, can't remember her name. And that was a Black Knight's Tango. Are you going to take... Feels like that benefits me. Because that's like a key defensive knight. And I think the reason he's moved his knight here, well, apart from the fact that he's played a Karakhan and can't stick on c6, is to defend that. So, or replace. Okay. Rook DG1 is the verdict. <laughs> Going to get ready to storm the castle. Black seems to be playing fairly passively right now. If this, it will just prompt me to come out into the board and try and trade off for this guy. In fact, having my knight there, kind of putting pressure on him, I, I don't want to trade that knight and improve this one. But if he takes me, bishop takes, that's all good. So that is definitely a move to consider. But I think it's kind of the Gary and Harry show is is my my default right now. We have a prompt this, you know, this this kind of lame looking bishop could could have a role to play. It's nice having a major piece, rook or a queen, in line with your opponent's king. Always a good thing. Just layering, building up potential threats in the future. So now I've completed development. We completed development on move nine, which is pretty damn good. Okay, opponent is still two moves off. But he's a pawn up. That's what you get. So what I have to do, okay. Right, he's, he's playing on the queen side. I get it. Again, I'm just I'm just checking this. Is there any value in having no? Not really. If he does this, my knight's just going to come here. I don't think he's got enough firepower on this side. The, maybe the queen could come in, but you know, my, my bishops here again aren't doing too bad a job. So it's Gary time. Gary's going in. Off you go, Gaza. Defended by my rook. Queen could always come around here. Queen might come there, you know. It's like knight takes, takes, checkmate threat. Not pretty. So we've got to be on the front foot now. Being a pawn down. I can't let him make you... I mean, how does black make use of an extra pawn? Well, he kind of grinds down. You know, he's not going to make use of that extra pawn in the middle game. 
He's got to get to an end game. He's got to simplify down, right? That's how his extra pawn will show. So what I need to do is try and make sure that the game is won before we get to an ending. Which means keeping my, my stuff on the board. Attacking. Just don't let him catch his breath. That's the strategy. There we go. Okay. No worries. And if takes, I've got queen takes, actually. Yeah, I've got to think, you know, what, what would happen if, if he pushes b3. I mean, I could just take and then hide my king on b1. Okay. Uh, let's, let's throw in the checkmate threat. Come on. Got to prompt a weakness now. Now this is this is the move though, isn't it? Didn't really consider that too carefully, did I? I just went, oh look, a threat. However, this pawn also hangs. And that could that could be interesting. This this pawn was weakened earlier on. And he pushed b5. Knight here takes. Queen's a little bit short of squares over there. So we need to be careful about moves like that. So let's say knight here, queen here, bishop d7. I have this. I actually have this as well. So that looks okay. I don't have that at all. What am I talking about? Okay, do we take the pawn? There. So bishop d7. Right, so my queen's on here. So there's no no. Actually, yes. Potentially, but uh, no, no. No, no. So I think I'd have to come back here. So it takes their queen back here. I don't think he can attack me again. And I, I think, you know, grab, grabbing the pawn back while I still have my development lead. This pawn is, is defended. Um, I think that is meaningful. I think I'd like to dislodge that knight if I can. Maybe I'll play knight e5 just to give myself these couple of squares here. If this, obviously, we are coming back here. I think we're... Oh, he's got rooks there, but then... Okay, that's interesting. <sighs> Trying to trade queens. Now, material is equal. I have recovered my pawn, so I'm not so afraid of going into an ending. Black has advanced pawns at the queen side, but... Only two of them. This is an option. I could trade on my terms. The problem is that the knight is undefended. So I believe this doesn't work. Knight takes. I believe I have to trade. I don't see any other way around it. And, okay, that's defended. An immediate h4, I think. I'd like to block that pawn very much indeed. I think so knight e5 might have been... Okay, so here, yes, there's the potential of a discovered attack against my rook. Now, let's see how I go in there. Can he do anything dangerous with his knight? That's the question. Comes here to attack my bishop. And attacks my rook at the same time. I might do this. Actually pinning the knight. Because knight can't move with check. It's on the wrong colour. So I think that move looks nice. I'd still love to get my knight onto e5. With potential threats. You know, if, he, if he's careless, he moves his rook there. He gets a, gets a knight fork, stuff like that. But more than anything else, it's just preventing this pawn from moving forward. This pawn is weak, though. 
And that currently the knight is the only defender of that pawn, so. Also, this knight can't move to defend the bishop either. Okay, so he's defending the bishop with the rook. Okay. Is it time to play? I think it is. I think it is. You know, I just mentioned it. Now you've got to be a bit careful. So it might be something like rook fd8, something like that. So maybe I shouldn't have grabbed that pawn with the queen. Because that walked into this kind of simplification. Okay, there we go. Now the bishop has to defend this square. Also, there's no one other than king defending that. So rook f1 is an idea. Um, it might push this. Rook f1 will probably prompt him to play f6. Oh, g5. g5 is a thought. First. Then rook f1. He doesn't have this then because I take take and he's opened up his king. He's on 6 minutes 40 as well. So I, I like the psychology of the pawn storm. Um, but you don't win games through psychology alone. Obviously he can't move his bishop back. He's got to defend this c6 square, right? That's undefended. Mm. He's he's got a reasonable pawn structure around his king, and on the queen side he's executing a pawn storm as well. So, you know, on paper this looks quite close. I've got maybe this though as well. Not right now, obviously. Creates a hole for the knight, don't really want to be doing that. Yeah, I've got a hunch that the, the queen taking this c6 pawn may have been inaccurate. Opponent is now taking some time, he's, he's averaging you know, 30 seconds for a lot of moves. He's had a few over a minute as well. So the clock may prove a factor in this game. It's under five minutes now. And what I'm going to be trying to do now in the games from this point on is 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 play the 1510s, take it slow. I know that um, some areas of my game have improved recently, for sure. So I'm quite regularly hitting like 1900, guess the elos. Oh, okay. Interesting. Very interesting. I'm inclined just to bash through with h5. And to do that fairly quickly. Um, still the knight. I don't know. It's not really pinned. Um, yeah, I'm just going to play h5 quickly. Knight can't really go here or here. But it does hang the bishop, so... Might need to rethink this bishop. With all these pawns on, on the light squares there, it make his light square bishop is actually more dangerous than mine right now. So should this knight move, I think trading off makes sense for me. But no, we've really forced, you know, the issue here. He can't ignore this. It's 
still might play, still might target this pawn. He's under four minutes. King has to defend this. And if, if rook f1, he can bring his rook back. No, he can't bring his rook back because that falls into the knight fork on both rooks, right? So what's he got? f6? Takes, takes, rook takes. Huh, okay. Well, we just discussed this, and there's actually a threat here. That's, that's a decent move. I missed it. Do I need to take out the knight? I take knight. He takes bishop. Attacking my rook. Oof. I take knight with a pawn. I take the bishop. He comes here. I move my king. He takes my rook. I take the bishop. Okay. Right now... Oh, hang on. Takes, takes. I'm going to lose an exchange. Bugger. Oh, but he's undefended this as well. Hang on. All right, I've got to move the king. And do I move him towards the center? Or do I move away from the center? Key question. I think towards. So he's got options here. If he takes my rook... I need to decide if I want to save the bishop or take the knight and give up the bishop. If I save the bishop, I have the threat of that. However, like we said, with these light squared pawns, This he takes, rook defends this bishop. If I do this fork straight away, he just, he takes that, I get the exchange back. So the fork is actually on, isn't it? I've got a, a minor piece hanging. There? I'm going to get one of the rooks. There? He takes my bishop, I take his rook. There? He takes his pawn, I take his rook. I'm going to get a rook. Hang on, so let's think this through. Whatever he does, he could take a piece, I get a rook. Well, in fact, the only piece he can take is the bishop. My knight defends this pawn, by the way. It takes, you take back, I get the knight. I've got the exchange back, haven't I? Okay, but now I'm attacking your other rooks. Now you have to take with the bishop, and I get this knight. And material equality is restored. I have a dark squared bishop, and so does he. That's defended. Okay. I can defend with the bishop here, or I can defend with the rook here. Or I can ignore it and bash through on the king side. Here he might have this, then my that's two attackers and, and my pawn is pinned. So I'm thinking we bash through on the king side. There. I can I can summon two defenders, but that's and that's two attackers, so yeah, okay. So this now... It's a nice hole there for my bishop. I know, it's, this is... Um, he hasn't got f5 because I can capture on passant. This is very close. Okay, we're now bishop here and he's got pawn. I think I have to defend with the pawn, don't I? If he takes, uh, maybe bishop takes, joining the pawn chain and kind of holding everything together. Making a tall pawn, but at the same time, there are threats. In fact, rook here, if my bishop is on there, there is a, 
potential checkmate threat. Opponent is speeding up. So there is got I think it's got to be the bishop. Kind of get my king over. Five pawns, five pawns. This is my strength, really, in a way. I want to hold that together. He can contest the d pawn with this e pawn. This is going to contest that pawn. He's he might end up with a kind of runaway g pawn. And for me, it's probably the c pawn. That's what I'm thinking. Okay. That was 52 seconds, I think. But this is by no means straightforward. Oh, okay, that's three attackers, isn't it? Um. I have to do this. But then he takes my bishops on, under fire. Curses. I can't take because it pawns a pin. Oh, what are you doing? My bishop's going to be on priest then. Takes and I drop back because I, I really want to keep this threat here. Silly. Why did I go wrong there? I don't know. But that, that is a, a checkmate threat. Which he might avoid by pushing the f-pawn. Or by getting the king out of dodge. But of course it all depends on him moving this pawn again. I, I might have king d2, d3. That is a thought. Because he can't summon any more defenders for this pawn. It's isolated. So that, that might be the, the right tactic at this point. To go after that runaway pawn. To give myself a 2-1 on the queen side. He's got 2-1 on the king side. And he is somewhat down on the clock. Also, these, both of these pieces have to defend this pawn right now. <coughs> no. How's your endgame, supper jump? Whoa. JJ! Can't come there. Is he thinking about this? <coughs> Jensen, pack it in. <coughs> no. One has far too many dogs. I think I have to trade off there. I think I do. King takes, I move here. King comes here, and it does defend. But then I have this. Forcing the king away. Oh, a king comes here, it drops the pawn. Jensen, shut up! Okay. Um, I can win the pawn back, can't I? Takes. He might trade everything off, and then he's going to want to run away with this. But also, my, my rook hangs as well, that's the other issue. So here, he starts running. I take, 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 take. I don't think I can get... His pawn's going to be further up, that's the problem. Here. Yeah. 
Yeah, this doesn't look good. Like I said, this G-pawn is the uh, is the threat. Maybe I need to drop my bishop back. So I'm going to put here, put my rook on a light a light square. Bishop down to c1. He pushes now. Bishop c1, he can push again. But then he's in danger of getting his pawn in front of his king. My king's doing a good job here, actually. It's kind of neutralized his bishop to some degree. Remember, his king can't set foot on there now because of my bishop. So he can't go there and he can't go there. If he gets his pawn in front of his king, could be problematic. A3, B4. Try and create a pass pawn of my own. <sighs> Too close, this. Okay, three it is. He's on a minute 30. But if he can... And also, this bishop's just tied now. It's really tied up to that, that pawn. I might even do this. But if, if Tate's Tate there, then his bishop's blocking my pawn as well. You never know. We'll have a look. See what can be done. He has to defend this twice, because it's attacked twice. So that's the way it's going to be now, guys. One game a day with analysis. Try and learn something. Take something away from each game. Okay, and this. Attacking this pawn. And it can't advance because I take and he's down to a minute. He does have a ten, ten second increment. Also, this pawn hangs. So he's got... What? He's got two... Uh, this one doesn't, but this one does. Here? I think I've got to take that pawn. I don't think there's no two ways about it. He can't come down there. He's maybe got a check, but... Still, I've got two attackers on here, two defenders, right. So the bishop coming back there released. <sighs> okay, king here then, to defend the pawn. This. Two attackers, two defenders. King and the bishop must defend g5. Can't push that yet. I can push that though. This king can't go there or there. If I attack, he can defend with his bishop or he can defend with his king. If he defends with his bishop, he loses this pawn as well. I'd like to keep his king out, but there's no real way of doing that without getting my own king like here. Okay, he's defending with the bishop on that square, right. Let's press our advantage. Still defended twice, attacked twice. Ooh. Okay. He wants to come in here. Doesn't he? That I take. No, he queens. Arrgh. In fact, you can't push it immediately. He could do this. Man. Forty four seconds. Hmm. Let's 
It's defended three times currently. Yeah, I might even take out the pawn. <clears throat> I think I have to. Then actually, if we trade rooks, it's a draw. Yeah, yeah I think that's fair. I think that's fair. I'll take the draw. Okay, and that's what the computer says as well. But that was close, guys. That was close. So let's have a look at the review. It's nice. I don't have to copy the PGN in. <sighs> look at that, guys. Now, I had an advantage here and lost it. And there's a mistake. So, um, but look at that. That was quality. Both of us in the 1800s. Very good end game. Wasn't brilliant at the start. So let's, let's have a check on this. Yeah, no, that's inaccurate. Yeah, so so he's he's blocked in his bishop. Excellent move. Even better castles. Queen e two. Okay. And now I play queen e two. So this is just super tight. Okay, he didn't like that too much. Ooh, frisky and actually. Essentially giving up a pawn too. So let's see, what was this mistake? There we go. There we go. Taking the free pawn was a mistake. Best move here. It's dropping the queen back and we are equal. Okay. But so we have all load of simplification. That wasn't great. And that's a mistake. Okay. That was good. And that, okay, I had to do that. Okay, good. King d1. Oh. Get the bishop out of the way. Get the bishop out of the way. I'm still threatening the fork. I'm still threatening the knight. And in fact, oh my goodness. Just something I didn't even ask myself is how is the knight going to get away? Answer, he can't. He's trapped. I'm going to win the knight, right? And, and, uh, and I still have the fork threat. Okay, that was my chance, guys. And I cut short that, that thought process. And that's excellent. Huh. Even better. Going in for the kill. Well, well, well. Okay, so... Nothing lost, nothing gained, apart from a little bit of experience and a little bit of knowledge. Um, but yeah, so we will carry on. This is now an intermediate level speed run kind of exercise thing. But uh, yeah, please come along for the ride. That was, um, that was just a good performance by both of us. Not stellar, not fantastic, but uh, nice and accurate in the end game for sure. And uh, a draw once the uh, dust settled. That's, Chess.com says it's the right song. Okay. So, see you tomorrow.